It all starts here, in a tiny class called app. Even before any scene gets loaded, a bootstrap method is invoked. Its task is to load and instantiate the app prefab, a prefab containing all the components necessary for the game to operate. As of right now, there are three of them. Input Manager, which serves as a bridge between Unity's input system and the game. Save Manager, which handles communication with the save system. And the Game Mode Manager. Even though extremely different, these components have one thing in common. Unlike most components in Unity, which live and die with their parents scene, these ones are instantiated at the very beginning of the game and persist until it ends. This immortality is granted to them by the app class. Out of these three components, Game Mode Manager is indubitably the most interesting. Assertion can be divided into what I like to call Game Modes, independent parts of the game guided by different sets of rules. Currently there are two of them, Main Menu Mode and Story Mode. Game Mode Manager takes care of switching between them as needed. It looks like this. First, if we're already switching between modes, we wait until we're finished. If the current mode is the same as the mode we want, we do nothing. Otherwise, we start switching. We wait until the screen fades to black. If the current mode exists, we end it. And then, we start the next mode. Finally, we make the screen visible again. Because switching is realized by a coroutine, game modes can take as much time as they need to start. For example, this is how the story mode starts. First, we check if we are in the correct state. At any given moment, a game mode can be in one of five different states. Then we fetch the correct save that the player has chosen. We make sure that it's created. Notice that the save system uses async await instead of coroutines. As I enumerator is an extension method that wraps this asynchronous task in a coroutine, so that I can yield it here as usual. I then retrieve the path of the current scene from the location interpreter and load it. Finally, I dispatch the unload event on every store that has been registered by this scene. The interesting thing here is that because I do this right after the scene was loaded, this event happens after on enable but before start, which I think is pretty useful. Now let's take a look at this context thing. All the components we talked about up until now live in a sort of a global scope, a scope that persists throughout the entire game. But when a game mode loads an additional scene, the scene can be thought of as another smaller scope that starts when the scene is loaded and ends when it gets unloaded. So this context is a component that's present in every scene loaded by the story mode, and it provides access to lots of managers necessary for the scene to function. For example, the Save Store Manager allows game objects to register their custom stores. Story Mode can then access this Store Manager to dispatch the Unload event. So the context is like a bridge between the global scope and the scene scope. My favorite thing about this architecture is that while in the editor, you can launch the game from any scene you want. To achieve that, Game Mode Manager does some additional work. During Awake, it checks the index of the current scene. If it's zero, meaning it's the initial scene, we simply activate the main menu mode as we would normally. If it's one, it means that we started the game from the main menu scene. In this case, we load the initial scene and start the main menu mode using a special onEditorStart method. Unlike the onStart method, this one is not a coroutine. Finally, if it's any other scene, we do the same thing, but this time we immediately start the story mode. This is how the onEditorStart method of the story mode looks like. It's really similar to the normal onStart, but instead of loading the scene, we just assume that the currently loaded scene is the one we wanted. I'd like to emphasize, halting the main thread of Unity is rarely a good idea, I'm just an imbecile. But yeah, uh, this is it. This is the architecture behind Assertion. I feel like, as devloggers, we rarely talk about these sort of things. We're always like, hey guys, this is a new enemy, new level, new mechanic. Uh, that's why today I wanted to take a step back and take a look at the bigger picture. How all these things I talked about for the past few months connect together into something that we can hopefully one day call a game. <laughs>